at Apple's App Store, Google Play, or visit CarmelLimo.com. How did Venus and Serena Williams become two of the most dominant female athletes of our time? Long story. But you could start with the moment Richard Williams saw a woman with a racket receive a giant check on TV. That was the moment he decided his daughters should be tennis champions, even though he didn't have daughters and knew nothing about tennis. Or you could go back to any of the moments of his youth when he was insulted and beaten by Klansmen and cops. A violent upbringing in a racist South made him an angry, tough, and determined man, but it also created the foundation of a sporting dynasty, and he describes it all in his new book, Black and White, The Way I See It. Richard Williams, welcome. I think it's, it's an honor to be here. Oh, it's good to have you. Thank you. Um, I want to get your thoughts on the Sterling story, you know, race in America. It's a big theme in your book, but we got to understand where you're coming from yeah. first. Mm -hmm. And you were born to sharecroppers. Yes, I was. Shreveport? I was probably born to sharecroppers, but I didn't share anything. The other guy got all the problems. They, yeah, there was no sharing involved. <laughs> Not at all. Like you said, you made a million dollars, but he kept his, he kept his, his, his part. Head but head. your mother, Julia, when she went into labor pains with you, tried to go to the hospital in a mule cart in a driving rain. Mule broke its leg, tried to walk, and laid in the road as cars drove by. It was a, a time where that I shouldn't have came into the world. Didn't look like no one could survive that time. But my mom, being the mom she was, could survive anything. And that's how I was born. I was born with a champion as a mom. My mom is my God. She, um, your father, you write about, would come in just enough to make a baby, and make a going. baby, and split. Yes. So there's no man in the house. No. She would pick cotton and pull you on the sack. Yes. Right. And so you learned. I mean, it was basic, basic, yeah. basic. Yeah. Um, and the racism you describe. Uh -huh. I, I just pick one. What was the worst moment for you? Was it the Klan? Was it the cops? What, what, uh, I think the worst moment for me, by the time I was maybe eight years old or seven years old, one of those in that time, I got jumped on by the Ku Klux Klansman, and I couldn't run. And that being that at that age, you weren't about to be able to whip three men. But the little I could do was try to kick and move about. That didn't help me. And when I see my dad looking on and would not help and wouldn't provide no word. And one of the clans said, I think this is something to him right there. And my dad took out rolling. He was running so fast. And by him taking a moment to look at him, I took out running. And what that taught me was that you have to be ready for everything. But you didn't just run. You fought back a lot. A little bit, not that much. It's only so much you can do at a small age. I was the second time I got jumped on yeah. by the Ku Klux Klan. But you read about like, stealing a Klansman's cowl yeah. and robe. Oh, and putting yeah. makeup on your hands yeah. to infiltrate, yeah. it, it, for what? Were you going to wreck vengeance and, and, and you had a gun at one point? <laughs> you could have killed him. I was going to do that. I felt a lot of hatred toward me, and there was nothing I could do. So I had gotten beat up not long before then by the sheriff's department. He took my three rabbits and my squirrels, and I decided someone was going to pay that night. And I rode my bicycle. My bicycle, I could ride that thing. I had a reputation, no one could outrun me, and no one could ride a bicycle faster. So if I got ahead of the Ku Klux Klan, they were going to catch me, not even over old truck. So when I went down there that night, I actually went to, to hurt someone. Your mother later said, I see prejudice in you. Yeah. You need to free your mind, free yes. your heart, yeah. right? Yeah. Did you ever? Do you still have some of that resentment deep well, down inside? What happened was... Dr. Carter was a, a doctor on East 70th Street in Shreveport, Louisiana, and I thought he hated me. So I went to Mom, Dr. Carter is prejudiced. She said, well, I am too. And I said, you? She said, oh, yeah. See, you don't have anything. Your dad doesn't help you. I don't have anything. She said, let's go see Dr. Carter. She went seeing Dr. Carter. And she told Dr. Carter, she said, you don't have no husband. You have to help me raise this boy here. And she and Dr. Carter raised me. And my mom taught me that hatred and prejudice it's in the mind of people that wasn't going to do anything. She said, you're going a long ways in life. And she wanted me not to have prejudice. So my mom taught me not to be prejudiced at all. But during the process of not trying to be prejudiced and getting beat and called the names that I was called during yeah. those days, it was very difficult for me to overcome those things. Fast forward this. It's an amazing story. You get to Chicago. You find racism there. You make your way to Southern California. You start a business. You're sitting there watching the TV. Did you really you see Virginia Rizicki? Rizicki. 
Razik? Virginia Razik. I got a $40,000 check, <laughs> and you said, I'm going to have daughters. You had stepdaughters. I'm going to have daughters, and they're going to be incredible tennis players? Yes, but every one of my family, well, no stepdaughters did ever decide to call people. They was my daughter. My mom taught me that everyone was my daughter. And I raised all of them and did the best I could to help for their mom. He was an attorney in Lindell, yeah. in the music world, Venus Serena. So we did, I did the best I could do. But I believed that I could make two number one players. And that's what I started doing, writing a plan up before you asked the mother to get pregnant. But that's, I gotta say, a little <laughs> selfish. I mean, why not have the kids and see, hey, maybe they wanna play soccer. Maybe they wanna yeah, play baseball. Play, play baseball. <laughs> why, why tennis? Was that the, you deliberately picked the whitest sport you could? And Most of all, the man, now you wanna play at all. I'll be, <laughs> but I thought I would raise them the same way my mom raised me. And anything my mom wanted me to do, I was gonna do. And I thought if I raised them that way, they would too. My mom taught me that anything I need to do, I could achieve it, that I could be the better than anyone else in the world if I prepare hard enough and long yeah. enough, and that's what I did with them. So when we come back, self-taught, had to scare the gang members out of the courts in Compton, <laughs> got beat up in front of Venus when she was a little girl. I want to hear that and also talk about what you think of this Donald Sterling story and what happened at Indian Wells. A lot to talk about with Richard Williams. Stay with us. <laughs> we don't have enough show. If you're like us, dogs and cats have always been more than just pets. They're part of the family. So when they need some help getting around, give them Cosequin. The number one veterinarian-recommended retail joint health supplement brand, Cosequin. Available from veterinarians and retailers nationwide. No matter what kind of business you own, AT&T business experts can help keep it running seamlessly so you can get back to what you love when everyone and everything works together business just sings Let Quicken Loans help you save your money with a mortgage that's engineered to amaze. of luxury continues the next generation 2015 escalade active all day presented by the makers of Aleve. chris hoffman doesn't have time for life's aches and pains when not playing with her grandsons she shares a business with her daughter looks after her mom and maintains a 10 acre farm i can't let body pain slow me down so when needed i take an over-the-counter pain reliever just to leave can provide all day relief and allow people like Chris to do the things and be with the people they love. Active all day. Presented by Aleve. Two pills. All day relief. This is Kevin. To prove to you that Aleve is the better choice for him, he's agreed to give it up. It's today? We'll be with him all day as he goes back to taking Tylenol. I was okay, but after lunch my knee started to hurt again and now I've got to take more pills. Yeah. Another pill stop. Can I get my leave back yet? For my pain, I want my leave. Look for the easy open red arthritis cap. Addiction is a disease and must be treated with the right balance of science, individualized treatment, and family support. Inspire Malibu is a 100% science and evidence-based treatment center that uses the industry's most advanced treatment methods by the world's leading addiction experts. If you're struggling with addiction, Choose a treatment center that uses proven scientific methods and medical doctors to successfully treat your addiction. Inspire Malibu. Breakthrough science and unsurpassed patient care for addiction. Hey, what are you doing today? I'm backing up the computer. Photos, work files, you name it. Lovely. See you in a few hours. Did you get everything backed up? Took care of it. 
For just $59.99 a year, Carbonite backs up your irreplaceable files automatically so you don't have to. Try it for free at Carbonite.com. On the next Anthony Bourdain Parts Unknown, Russia, a country struggling to find its identity. Will its Soviet past hold back its capitalist future? You ask for capitalism, you got it, buddy. Anthony Bourdain Parts Unknown, Sunday night at 9 Eastern and Pacific on CNN. Between them, Venus and Serena Williams have won 15 Wimbledon titles, more Olympic gold medals than other, other women in tennis. And back with me now, their dad, the guy who taught them everything they know about the game, Richard Williams. Good to have you back. So you, your mom was pretty rough. She would hit you with a switch when she was trying to teach you your lessons, yeah, right? Yeah. And you write about parenting uh, this way. Uh, throw this quote up. I don't have it in front of me. I'm going to have to read it off the screen. I surely don't understand all these parents today who are always telling their kids how special they are without them proving it. That's not faith. That's flattery. i got another one here that is going to make some moms mad out there. I feel like we're too soft on our kids. The way Venus and Serena were raised, they didn't have any choice but to be strong. What was your line? What is your definition of abuse? When a, you're going against a child and helping a child to dislike what they would like to do and punishing them for something they do not deserve to have. Let me give you an example. I've seen a lot of kids in tennis. Their wrists would be broken, would get beat up. Lots of kids would come to me, do any serenity get beaten? Especially if they lose, I said, no, matter of fact, I pay them. You pay them? Uh -huh. Because see, I want my kids to learn how much I love them. But the most important thing I think about abuse it, prom it prominently damaged a kid forever, long after they are kids and are deaths. And I don't want to do it with my kids. Now, you moved your family, even though you could afford to live elsewhere, you moved your family into the toughest crime-ridden neighborhood in L.A. in yeah, Compton, Compton. Because you thought it would make them tougher, ultimately. That, a lot of people have a hard time with that. Yes, they would. I would understand why. Let me give you an example here. If you take the roughest neighborhood, what came out of them? Out of Compton, we had Easy e Snoop Doggy Dog, Helen Ashford. These were unbelievable athletes. You know, almost the greatest the athletes first two was in rappers, the world. Yeah. They came out of some type of ghetto, including Joe Lewis. So that's what I want to teach my kids. There's nothing free, but you can work their way out of here. Mm -hmm. My kids visit Beverly Hills so much, and almost every hill you can think of there, Hollywood Hills and all those places. But you have to work to get there. Nothing is free. And they was great workers. And their education was better than they did. Let's look at them as kids here. It's in, I mean, it's, your daughters are now in their 30s. But this is uh, Serena and Venus at, at a younger age with their dad and coach. Serena serving to the Ed Out corner. And Venus is serving to the Deuce corner. And uh, you can see that serve look very good, hopefully. Uh, they're going to serve about five or ten more balls for you. And uh, great serve. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you literally had to beat the gang members away from this court in Compton with a stick. So, but once you went, you started entering tournaments and entering what was really the lily white world of tennis. Yeah, yeah. Did you sense resentment? From the who? From the, the, the other the white families? World? Yeah, the other no, players, yeah, the other coaches. Yeah. And let me say this to you also. The gang members helped me too, even though they beat me up. These were the first one to sympathize and come back and say, we did it wrong. Really? Yeah. Even though we shot at you, we did it wrong. We want you guys to make it. And actually helped us to make it. And that helped us a great deal. It's all in the book if people will read it. Yeah. So I think that that's what helped us a great deal. When we entered the tennis world, I knew Venus and Serena were going to win because I watched junior tennis. And <clears throat> they wanted to play. I didn't want them to play junior tennis. And when they played, I've seen a lot of white parents would talk about, I hate to see them girls coming. They win all the time. Well, they were supposed to win. They was taught to win. They had everything to win. But more than a racket and fast feet, what they had, they had a great head, which is in the book, and that's why I want people to read it. In 2001, you were at Indian Wells, still sort of a notorious chapter where Venus pulled because of injury right before a match against her sister, and the place booed. Yeah. And you heard a lot of racial slurs yes, in, in that crowd, yeah. and, and they haven't played since. No, not in any way with that. Was, I mean, sure, plenty of people were booed because they were disappointed, but do you really think a lot of that was, was racial? Yes, I do. I do. Know, not think, I know it was. You know it was. Yes, not only that, 
Venus had notified the WTA office that she was hurt and had seen the doctor. The WTA should have announced what Venus right. had said to them. I was ahead of time. They did not. I'm not saying the WTA was prejudiced. They might have thought she might get better and want to play. But I thought it was very prejudiced of people that live in homes cost millions of dollars that will boo a poor kid that's supposed to be an American. Yeah. And let me ask you about uh, Donald Sterling, his comments. Should he be forced to sell his team for what he said? Well, actually, he might be, should be. Uh, I think he should give the team away. Stop selling it. It might, it might seem a different light that way. And give it to me. <laughs> give it to you. <laughs> As a racial, as an olive branch to the black community, give you a billion dollar price. Yeah, that's very generous of you. But this, uh, uh, <laughs> it takes a person like Don Sterling. See, this was in his car from his home. Right. That's where all that takes place at. In the home. In the home. So he grew up with 77 years of disliking people because of the color of their skin. So, yes, I think he's prejudiced. He proved it. Yeah. Uh, it's been a, a wonderful talking to you. The book, Black and White, The Way I See It, amazing stories in there. Thank you. And we'll keep rooting for your girls. Please do. <laughs> All right. God bless Richard you. Richard Williams, thank, thank you. you. Great to meet you. Okay. When we come back, the woman behind the mask, V. Stiviano, setting a new fashion trend. So what connects new jobs, cleaner air, and a family barbecue? American natural gas. All made possible by safe hydraulic fracturing technology. Log on to learn more. Defiance is in our bones. Defiance never grows old. Citracal Maximum Calcium Citrate Plus D. Highly soluble, easily absorbed. There's a reason why Spider ETF investors usually find what they want. Daddy! Hey! My picture! They know where to look. Before investing, consider the funds, investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses. Call 1-866-787-2257 for a prospectus containing this information. Read it carefully. This Mother's Day, why not send her a smile? We'll handcraft an arrangement that fits her perfectly. 1-800-Flowers. <gasps> oh! After all, Mom deserves the very best. Make her day unforgettable with a truly original gift, and you can count on it with our 100% smile guarantee. This Mother's Day, don't settle for the ordinary. Let us arrange a smile for you. Visit 1-800-Flowers.com. It's all about you. At the heart of our world is you. It's why our commitment to be the best will always be all about you. Excellence in flight, Korean Air. Do you own an oil company? Well, if you have a pension or mutual funds or other investments, chances are you do. Learn more, visit energytomorrow.org. We should be on the air at six o'clock as, as predicted. Choose to go. Where no one else will go today. Discover the unfamiliar halfway around the world and the unexpected far closer to home. And just when you think your journey has reached an end, look again. It's only just beginning. Have you ever looked for a hotel online? Did you notice that there's so many seasons change and so do styles? What never changes is the untouchable value at My Bob's Discount Furniture. Why pay $5,000 or more for a bedroom like this at the Hoity Toity store? $5,000? Relax. Look at me. It's only $12.99 at My Bob's. Dresser, mirror, headboard, footboard, two wood rails, chest, and even a nightstand. All eight pieces, only $12.99. Thanks to you, My Bob's is 50 stores strong and growing stronger every day. Did you know that one in five people have had an online account hacked and 61% of people use the same password everywhere? Trying to keep track of all your different passwords across all your sites is really challenging. 
Keeper is a secure and easy to use password manager and data vault that works seamlessly across all your devices. Keeper protects your identity and remembers your passwords using military grade encryption. Keep your 